Hi, and welcome to this episode of Integrity Matters by Turnitin. Today's guest is Toby Truin, director of the Hale Institute of Innovation and Research at Hale School. Today we'll be exploring the topic of academic integrity in secondary schools. Hi, Toby. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, welcome, welcome to Integrity Matters by Turnitin. Uh, so, Toby, not to, not to steal uh, any thunder for, uh, from you, but it would be fantastic if you could um, introduce yourself, your role uh, at the Hale Institute, and just tell us a little bit about the school. Okay, so yeah, my name is Toby Truen, uh, and I'm the director of the Hale Institute of Innovation and Research at Hale School. Um, Hale School is a is a, a long-standing school. It's the oldest school in Western Australia, uh, founded in 1858, um, and it's a private school, a boys' private school, uh, ranging from pre-primary through to year 12. We have roughly around 1,600 students enrolled, and a combination of day boys and boarders boarders as well. Um, and yeah, just a, a school that's, I guess, got a lot of tra tradition to it uh, and a, a good reputation, but always looking for best practice, next practice, and looking for innovative ways to improve learning for our students as well. And specifically your role at the school, could you tell us a bit about that? Absolutely, yeah. So we had a, the Hale Institute uh, founded a couple of years ago, and one of its primary goals is to look for I guess opportunities for innovation in learning and also research opportunities in teaching and learning as well. So we have a strong emphasis at the moment on capabilities and skills, uh, transferable skills in particular, and the emphasis and importance on those for students. Um, and we're always looking for the best ways to prepare our students for the future. So it's um, always uh, ways that we can do that is through strategic partnerships with uh, external institutions, so be it universities or industry partners as well. Um, and also looking for inquiry in education as well. So looking at those new types of learning that, that gain deeper understanding for students. And I guess like a lot of schools are in that sort of state of transition where we're trying to maintain some of the great academic work that we have and the great reputations that we have, but also understanding that education is always changing and that we always need to be at the forefront of that change and looking for those new opportunities as they arise as well. That's fantastic. In terms of the, uh, the research that you're currently involved with, uh, can you share any of that with us? Yeah, absolutely. So we're looking at a range of different research opportunities that align with what the school's doing. So one example of that at the moment is with Notre Dame University. We're looking at the way, uh, the benefits of our outdoor education um, camps that we do and how that can enhance the well-being for students. So currently doing a study with them that does a lot of uh, pre and post surveying and focus groups with the students and just trying to articulate because anecdotally we know how great those opportunities are for the students and how they grow you know from a pastoral um, sense as well and just trying to now measure that and understand you know what are the key elements of that that sort of endeavor for the students and, and the benefits that come from those as well so always looking for those research opportunities we've done some on feedback as well the benefits of feedback um, and always doing research in all different age areas of the school as well that's great and what made you decide to, to get into education and I guess more specifically uh, the research element as well? Okay, yeah, so for me, it wasn't the plan. Uh, it wasn't always the plan. I was often at the back of the classroom and, uh, and yeah, it wasn't a goal to be a teacher by any means or to work in education. So for me, it was a, a little bit of a journey. So I, leaving school, uh, went to university and one of the things that I did as a university job was I taught swimming. So I was a squad uh, swimming coach and found that really uh, rewarding, teaching others and, and passing on skills and, and working with people. And then even working in industry, I worked as an industrial designer on some big projects, but always found the, the main thing that I had a passion for, again, was training other staff. So it kept coming up to the forefront and that sort of helped make that decision and um, yeah, haven't turned back since. So enjoyed you know making that transition to education and, and uh, it hasn't really felt like a job really, which is always a good sign if you can do that. <laughs> It's always been fantastic for me in my own uh, journey as a, as a student throughout the years, having educators that are passionate and, yeah, I guess almost falling into the, into the profession um, because they just loved it and, and love sharing their, their knowledge um, with students. You can, you can certainly tell. So yeah. that's great. So, Toby, you, you touched on a bit about, you know, the strategic plan, the role that research um, and forward thinking plays um, within Hale School. 
um, really with having the boys at the the core of you know everything that the that the institution does for them. Integrity is one of Hale School's six core values. Can you explain, you know, why why was integrity so critical or important that you guys included in that? Um, yeah, I think that's it is a very important value. One one of the most important ones, I think, out of out of those six. Um, and I think it's important to go back to the process that we had. So when we did create the strategic plan, it wasn't a few people in a room. We actually consulted with our entire community, so, that, so the students, the staff, and the, and the families as well. And from that, what came to the forefront was those things that we really thought we wanted Hale School to represent and what we thought you know, represented the culture that we already had as well. And integrity was one of those really key ingredients, I think, that underpins everything that we do at the school. So um, it, it entails everything from academic integrity, but also to personal um, and pastoral integrity as well. So about being honest and true and, and consistent um, and trustworthy for people and, and just someone that, you know, is going to be a person represented in a way whether or not they're being watched or not. I think that was a good way that a staff member articulated it. You know, it's about how you act when people aren't watching and I think that really sums up integrity and we want to try and instill that as best as we can for the students as well. So making sure that they're making those right decisions and doing the right thing and and not doing it because they have to or because someone's looking, but doing it because it is, it is intrinsically the right thing to do. So for schools that may be at the start of their journey with you know, making an integrity, making integrity a, a value or a pillar of their own school, yes. do you have any um, you know, recommendations or guidance for them? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think don't be too, it's not going to happen overnight, so don't expect it to happen straight away. I think it's a long journey. It's something that has to be um, supported by everyone in the school. So, you know, all of the staff, all of the students need to be on board with it. Um, I think if you're trying to set up that culture, I think culture is a big part of it as well, having integrity. It's about setting norms. It's about setting expectations for the students. And I think it's about, you know, eventually you know it's working when people have that understanding and it's almost like an unwritten rule that they know what, what the right thing to do and what the wrong thing to do is. So, um, you know, the ways that we've sort of done that is by having, you know, you don't want to harp on it too much, but you have policies in place that can often be a good sort of foundation to work from. But I think an important thing is to start with students early on and educate them as early as you can about integrity about, you know, whether it is about, you know, an assignment they're handing in or if it's about how you interact with people or the decisions that you make. And I think revisit it regularly as well so that the students are seeing that it is important, it is at the forefront of the thinking of the school as well. Um, and I think by doing that, if you keep revisiting it and you keep making it normalised, I think that just becomes the expectation for everyone from that point on. That's great. You mentioned uh, earlier in that statement uh, creating buy-in with both the staff and, and the students. What are some things that you feel that you've done well to be able to support that and, and, and get that buy-in? Yeah, I think it's, um, for me, I'm, I'm a quite pragmatic person, so I like to always sort of spell out, you know, genuinely, you know, don't just say this is the wrong thing to do or it's the right thing to do. I think explain some reasoning behind it. So, you know, if I use academic integrity as an example, I, you know, I tell the students that firstly, it's the, it is the right thing to do. It's fair and it's rewarding those people who are doing the right thing. But I think further to that as well, it's preparing them the best that we possibly can for the future. So, you know, if they do go into tertiary study, there's a very, very high chance that they're going to have sort of checks and measures done, play, done through and this will <clears throat> get them on that pathway where they're doing the right thing early on. Even in the workplace, you hear about people who aren't being, you know, aren't just showing good integrity and getting found out through that as well. Um, I think further to that as well, it's, it's about... Um, you know, also that informing them about the, the, the downsides of it as well, about what can go wrong if they don't make the right decisions as well. And I think if the students are educated on the reasons why, you know, we're not trying to catch you out, it's not just trying, trying to make your life difficult, um, then eventually they, I think they just understand, yeah, it's, I can see the reasoning behind why we should be doing this. And for staff as well, I think if they can see that this is going to encourage deeper understanding and deeper learning and, and acquisition of difficult concepts, um, and it's not going to be, you know, much workload for them. I think it makes that argument a lot easier as well. Thank you. And with, I have conversations with schools and they say, you know, of course, as a, as a staff and as a collective, you know, we're always trying to, you know, lead by example 
And, you know, here within the school, we're able to control the conversation. But sometimes um, getting that buy-in from, we'll say, parents or guardians can often be a bit more challenging. Yes. Is that an element that you guys incorporate into, you know, your overall strategy in terms of the value of it, integrity? Absolutely. So, you know, a lot of our communication strategies will always pretty much involve the parents because they need to be on board as much as the students are as well and, and have that buy-in as well. And as I mentioned previously, I think it's a lot about, you know, justifying the reasons why we are doing these things. So, you know, from an academic viewpoint, we have a lot of tasks that are done out of class and there is genuinely an opportunity for students to, you know, not, not be authentic or show integrity in the way that they do those things. So, you know, we, we, I think by spelling out, you know, some of the benefits, you know, this is going to enhance your learning. It's going to make you perform better. And in particular, it's going to make you perform better when you do have suddenly an in-class or an in-house assessment. Um, I, I would hope that, you know, that that gets the message through to people because, you know, it can be a big downward spiral if suddenly students are not doing the work that they say is their own work and then those things get found out down the track. So, but it is very much about communication, uh, working collaboratively with the parents and the families to make sure that they're supporting the messages that are coming from the school. Otherwise, it's, a, it's an endless battle, I think, if, if they're not... And since you've been on this journey, is there anything that stands out as a really proud moment or a really fine example of the work that you and your team have done over the years? Yeah, I think for us it's about, um, you know, I, I guess as a, as a teacher, you always have that disappointment where sometimes you don't have that integrity or those expectations or, or that culture that I mentioned before, those norms not being met. And it is, it's disappointing and it's disappointing that it's happened and you also start to... I guess, have a bit of despair as to, you know, what, what's led to that point? Was the student that desperate or did they not understand the, the process behind it? So that's, I guess, a bit that's, you know, made it disappointing for me. But I guess for us, you know, we've, we've had turned in for over 10 years now. It's been a long journey for us. And I think one beneficial thing for me is that we see it as a formative tool where it's not catching students out, but it's actually giving them now some transparency. It's giving them an opportunity to be part of that process and to learn through that process as well. And I think they appreciate that as well, that suddenly they have a chance and an opportunity to be part of that process as well. So, you know, as they submit work, they can see if they have genuinely made a mistake that they can actually start to correct it before it's too late. And I think by having that buy-in from them and that opportunity where they get a bit of ownership on it, is um, there's, a, there's that sense of mutual respect as well where I think now it's got to the stage where they understand that there's some tools and some mechanisms in place to help them and because of that, you know, that, that disappointment or those opportunities for people to make the wrong decision doesn't happen as often, if, if at all now. So that's probably been one of the most positive things for me where we've given the students an opportunity to actually, you know, correct those behaviours um, in a genuine way and, and hopefully give them an opportunity to not feel that they're stuck and they've got no other choice. That's great. And in terms of uh, integrity in, in the wider integrity picture at the school, is there anything that's uh, next for, for Hale School? Um, I think just continually, you know, developing it as much as we can. We have currently a big emphasis on culture, oh, sorry, on um, character. Character is a big one for us. So in particular in our year nine program, we're, we're pretty much reinventing that whole um, program for that year group. So as I mentioned before, we do a, a big outdoor ed camp. So that'll be a big, big part of that. And I think, you know, things like character and, and integrity do go hand in hand. So um, it's interesting. We had a, a staff member just travel to um, Eton College in the UK and, and they've just recently done as well a whole lot of research on character as well. So I think for us, that's a big, you know, a big differentiator for us. It's a big point of difference. I think it's a, a big reason why families send their, their children to us is because they, it's not just the academics about the development of the whole child, that holistic development. And those attributes such as integrity and character and authenticity are things that are, are highly valued. So we've recognised that and we want to keep you know, pursuing that and developing that as much as we can. That's amazing. Such a, an important uh, mission and, and very exciting. So thank yeah. you. Thank you for yeah, sharing that. Um, I guess to, to end, so if there was one piece of advice that you had for a school that, you know, again, is, is just starting on their journey um, what advice would you share with, um, with the educator? Um, I think, you know, keep fighting the good fight would be the message for me. So, you know, for, it is easy for teachers. I, I can assume just, you know, just to look past that, you know, that opportunity where someone has done the wrong thing or you see a bit of, you know, 
you know, the, like I guess from an academic sense where you see a student who perhaps taken the shortcut or cut corners and things like that. But I think it's, it, the downside of that is it undermines so much about what you as a teacher or you as a school represent as well. So my message would be, you know, just look for opportunities to try and circumvent that, to fix it up and build that, those norms that you want uh, in the classroom and in the school and, and develop that culture as much as, as much as you can. And, you know, a little bit of uh, effort and pain in the first instance can lead to some big benefits down the track. So that would probably be my main message to send. Very valuable. Thank you, Toby, for joining us today. Um, and no look, look forward to connecting with you soon. Sounds good. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for today's episode. And a special thanks to Toby Truen again, the director of the Hale Institute of Innovation and Research at Hale School. We hope you'll join us for future episodes soon.